Coco. Hello, Christopher. Good to see you. Welcome to our little room. Um, we're here today to talk about the new product line packages that you've come up with. Do you want to tell us a little bit about those, first of all? Yeah, so we've we've devised a new offering called We Build. Um, it's something that we've been thinking about for quite a long time. We've got the team, we've got the skill set, and we've identified a, a need from our customers. Whether it's new customers that are still going through their learning and education with Infigo and they want to try and get ahead of the game, maybe they want to see orders coming in quickly, which is music to our ears. Mm. We want to see orders coming through the storefronts and obviously hitting the presses as soon as possible. So that's kind of one track that we see it being used, but also for our more seasoned customers that maybe they haven't got the available skill set at the moment, or maybe they just don't have the capacity right now and that their customer is pushing them for a hard deadline. So we've got the team of experts that are set up to deliver the services and, and deliver nice. the, the storefront solution on their behalf. What was the um, what was the main driver behind um, pulling all this together? And um, obviously, you've gone to some serious detail here with these packages. They look very focused, depending on the business size and what they're looking to achieve. What was the main kind of point where you were like, right, we're going to do this? What was the well, driver? I sat down with Ricky, who's our head of professional services, and we spoke about it in a way that we wanted to deliver a, a vehicle, I suppose, that can be fairly efficient for our teams to to turn around so that we know that in terms of launching something that there's a, a, a very much reduced timeline. Um, we know that how quick, and I think this is probably still post pandemic, that people still need to really act quickly upon some some opportunities that arise. Might be that there's an initial demonstration of a, of a, of a demo site of mm -hmm. Infigo and our users then want to make it their, their own. Mm -hmm. um, so we needed to devise a solution that we can, and that's why they are kind of, they're not templated as such, but that's why they're packages because it allows us in a, in a very efficient manner to be able to deliver time yeah. and time again. And I think that's probably the most important part. We're utilizing the skills that Ricky's team have got. Yeah. It allows, from a customer success perspective, it allows us to be able to very quickly and easily demonstrate what you're gonna get yeah. in each version of the packages. Um, but most importantly, we're delivering a polished experience. Okay, and uh, tell me a bit more about the team that's gonna be delivering these. So you mentioned Ricky, um, obviously there's more more people involved there yourself yeah. tell me a bit about the team so obviously the original uh, the initial conversations are going to come from the customer success team that's be myself and Rob okay. or even via the support team if there's an inbound request that comes via a support centre um, the team that's delivering this at the, at the forefront is um, is Ben and TJ um, both front end developers and then also we've got our product build offering as well that, that accompanies it and the product build side of things is there for a secondary value stream mm -hmm. essentially a lot of customers um, find that product building is, is easier to, to develop and deliver um, in a shorter space of time and that's why they may be a bit more reliant on um, on the front end team to skin the site and they'll look after the products but we've also got Nicola and Wayne that can help on and building the products and then Beverly along with Ricky is managing that resource to ensure that we can get things planned in mm -hmm. delivered turned around and, and, and launched as efficiently as possible okay and um, the three packages are called, or they've got names? So we've got Starter, Okay. <laughs> then we've got Scale, nice. and then we've got Enterprise. Lovely, okay. And just give us a little overview on each of those. Yeah, so the, the Starter package, you're gonna get, um, obviously, either your own or your customer's branding applied to the storefront, so that's gonna be the logo, it's gonna be primary and secondary colors. Mm -hmm. um, there's a default set of pages that will be skinned, so the, the home page, the category page, the product landing page, and then kind of the, the My Account section, the shopping cart, so your general e-commerce elements. Um, we've kept the, what we call topic pages or content pages to a minimum, um, because it's a very concise or front experience. As you go up to then the, the middle package, the scale package, um, you're gonna get custom pages in there, your FAQs, your about us, your contact us. So it's a bit more of a, uh, a deeper experience, I suppose, if yeah. you were to describe it that way. And then when you go all the way up to the top, um, at the enterprise level, we're gonna start then building out a lot more custom section. So it might be that your requirements are to copy a specific page layout from the corporate website, for yeah, example, yeah. and you want to emulate that on the Infigo storefront. So I guess the customer drives the, the theme, whether it's a B2B or B2C, yeah. that's something that you let them... Yeah, so so these packages are, are aimed predominantly at B2B. Okay. What, we're, what we're offering here is the closed storefront solution where you're delivering this for your customer's needs. Mm -hmm. So as opposed to being a, a B2B or an open storefront, it's very much that closed storefront B2B experience. Right, okay. Um, 
getting their, they're keeping their customers customers sticky that's and, exactly yeah. okay um tell us a bit about yourself greg so you mentioned ricky and ben and beverly what, what about what about yourself what, tell us a bit about your history of print and where you are so what you do in a normal day <laughs> so so i'm head of customer success at infigo um i've been with the business for 10 years next month um was one of the first wow. ever Figo customers um, working for uh, a local digital print company in the southeast of England um, as a graphic designer and ran an early version of Infigo essentially for, for several years. And then I joined the business 10 years ago and initially uh, running the, the technical support team. And then six years ago, we founded the customer success operation. And we're really here to help add value to our customers. We want to make sure that our customers are using the platform to its fullest extent. Okay. Um, we're here to keep you on task because we know that it's busy, busy days in the print shop and therefore or within the organization and therefore not everyone can always give the time mm. and energy to the, to the web to print offering. So what we've done is um, we've put the team in place so that we can keep pushing that forward. We're, okay. we're here to keep you to task, but to make sure ultimately that a, you've got things configured correctly, yeah. but B, that you're actually utilizing those tools because okay. we can see, and many of our customers have the, uh, um, and understand the full benefits that we deliver, mm -hmm. um, but there's also a handful that don't. And what our job is to make sure that they are fully adopting the platform and receiving value from it. A lot of people have the tools within their armory and almost just scratch the surface with it. Yeah. So it's now taking it to the next level. How do we make sure that their customers are fully adopting it? So the end users are fully adopting the platform okay. as well. And you're a bit of a champion of a phrase I see, <clears throat> excuse me, banded around a lot, successful web to print. Yeah. Do you want to share a bit more of that? This seems to be a yeah. passion of yours. So um, it, it started with a presentation that I was, or a workshop I was delivering for HP um, back in 2018, delivering their web to print workshop at their uh, graphics experience center in Barcelona. Mm -hmm. And the whole presentation was around how you can be successful at web to print, what the benefits of web to print, what that, that brings. And I think it's actually a very... Uh, I, Separate <laughs> video for that one, I think. <laughs> um, I use it on all my, my posts on LinkedIn because I think it's a very powerful statement. Yeah, We see it day in, day out. We've got customers that are incredibly successful with our, our platform, turning over millions and millions of pounds nice. on, through the storefronts on an on a annual basis. And... They're the proof that this works. Mm -hmm. When you've got the right mindset, you've got the right vision for this, they've proven that it's Some examples done. in terms of so, mindset? So we've got, I think one of the big, biggest, and actually it's a, it's a part of that presentation, the successful web to print uh, presentation, there's a, a quote that I've got in there, that web to print is actually very much a mindset change within the, or it's a cultural change yes. within the organization. If you're a brand new adopter of web to print and not necessarily a second generation web to print user, the whole business has got to adopt web to print. Mm -hmm. They've got to understand that files are coming in from a different me means. Mm -hmm. um, so rather than someone picking up the phone and saying, hey, can I have a quote? I'm going to send you an email after files in a second. Yeah. It's going to come in completely automated. It's going to hit, temp it could hit your workflow straight away without anyone touching it. Yeah. And that's what we hope for anyways. Yeah. We've got it fine-tuned to that extent. <laughs> yeah. But the va again, the value piece around that is so important. Um, and I think a lot of people as I said earlier, are still scratching the surface of it because they're not getting the full um, benefit from that because they might have their storefront running, but they've got it very much siloed with their MIS or siloed mm -hmm. with their workflow and they're still with manual intervention. And what we're trying to do is really drive that adoption between those pieces mm -hmm. so that they can work in synergy with one another. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where, as more and more companies are bringing on web print, they're, they're understanding it. But going back to the cultural, the mindset shift, it's not just the people that are on the project team. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the print operators mm -hmm. so that they know and understand where to get the files. We're talking about the customer service or CSR team so that if a query comes in, they know where to find things on the storefront. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the sales team that they understand mm -hmm. what you can actually deliver when they're talking with their customers. Selling it correctly. Exactly. Yes, that. yes. Um, and then and then from kind of the people that are at the at the front of this, the, the as we, we term the, the phrase, the product champions, mm -hmm. making sure that they understand how and why they're configuring something yeah. in a certain way. Yeah. And it's interesting because uh, you've adopted that kind of phrase over the last few years. <clears throat> and I saw uh, post-COVID that that was something that was really, really important with people that already had web to print and they started to adopt it, this cultural change, yeah. as, as you mentioned. They started to uh, create additional revenue streams when actually 
uh, printers that weren't embracing digital or web to print were going out business. Yeah. So we've seen actually web to print become quite pivotal for safety in a very volatile world. So I've heard you on the stand many a time giving a very detailed demo. Um, working tirelessly obviously <laughs> we'll come on to that in a minute and uh, one of the things you always say is when people ask you so i want to get the b2c site up and i and i hear you kind of very patiently smile at them and, and say, look at them in the eyes and suggest a b2b site first yeah. just give me a bit of background into that because there seems to be an element of experience <laughs> in, that, in that in that comment well look i've been involved in this product for 13 years now and i've seen it i've seen a lot of successful launches seen a lot of failed launches and like experience kind of kicks in at this point and you realize that the the amount of effort uh cost and time that it takes to to build a b2c site and deploy a b2c site can be an incredible overhead for mm. a lot of businesses but not only that going back to the cultural piece we spoke about earlier is you've got to be used to where orders come into your business You've got to be used to every component piece within the organization, understanding how they are touching Infigo, mm -hmm. essentially, mm -hmm. and, and how Infigo touches their individual teams as well. So what we say actually now is that let's get one of your existing customers that you've already got a relationship with. There's not hard sale. There's, there's actually, there's not even a marketing requirement to go in or advertising requirement to pull them into the storefront because right. the relationship's there. You know what their products are. You know the price point already set up the storefront for that that user you're on the same page and they're exactly yeah. that and they log in they place an order and then as soon as the order's been placed you know where the the money's gone to if they're paying online by a card for example so you understand your finance or accounting team knows where they need to look for that your csr knows how to update if the customer rings up and says hey i've just used your storefront for the first time where do i find my order status your production team understand how the files are going to come out. Mm -hmm. um, your dispatching team know where to go and type in the tracking number and change the status to shipped, or is it going into the MIS? And therefore, your your systems team is aware. So, by going more of an entry level solution, it really allows everyone across the business to understand their their own component pieces. Okay. On the flip side of that, as I said, a lot of our customers are very successful on their B two C storefronts. Um, and they do very, very well from what we've got storefronts up turning millions and millions of pounds um, every year. So we don't want to prohibit people, but it's more of a, let's just understand the fundamental pieces before you go for the fully blown experience. So, so obviously it sounds like a simple message. It sounds like you're safeguarding longevity of the project, the business, but I also hear or feel when I, when I hear you mention that sort of statement or advice to, to, to a prospect, that there's also the ability of generating the customer more revenue because surely if they keeping their existing customers locked in yeah. making them sticky giving them their own storefront they're going to feel valued they're set they're working they're connected to the workflow yeah. so you've got that revenue churning here before you start churning this exactly revenue that. here and and if we just focus on that term there making the customer sticky i know it's a, a, a phrase that a lot of organizations use and it's something that we definitely stand by in figo we can see where our customers deliver a polished storefront experience for their users mm -hmm. on the b2b front mm -hmm. You're typically locking them in. If if you've provided an experience, we always talk about internally and externally, kind of the Amazon experience. Everyone's so used to pulling their phone out of their pocket, going on the Amazon app, <laughs> searching for what they want, click click an order. You've, within five minutes, you've you've checked out. And we want to we want Web to Print to be the same. We want you to be able to quickly and easily locate the product that you want to order and check out. And it has to be right if if it's going to survive. Yeah, and by by delivering that really streamlined solution, you are starting, it's one of the contributing factors towards making that customer sticky to you. Because if you're giving a polished solution, they feel comfortable because it's got their branding on the storefront, it's got their branding on the products. That should be a major factor in, if you ask yourself, why would this customer ever want to leave us if we're mm -hmm. delivering this service? And a lot of people um, historically and within our industry are the first to put a picture of their, their latest press on the front of their website because that's what their talking about is so their, their new bit of technology. Um, other people talk about price point, service, um, turnaround times. Yeah. These are all contributing factors towards making something sticky. From from our standpoint as a technology supplier, our contribution towards making the customer sticky is providing that, that nice experience. And it really does go on to um, a, a, a thing or a method that I talk to a lot of customers about, and it's a review and refine stage. Okay. So, 
everyone always strives for the perfect website, right? So when you launch, whether it's a B2B, closed B2B portal, or it's a fully blown B2C opportunity, e-commerce solution, everyone always strives for perfect. And because design is such a subjective yeah. thing, your perfect might be very different to my perfect. Yeah. So therefore, what we often say to our customers is, let's launch the site, Yeah. let's get feedback from the people that's using it, whether yeah. it's, again, that, that business transaction or yeah. whether it's to Joe Public. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's let's get reviews in, let's yeah. get a review meeting put, put yeah. in. And off the back of that, then you do the refinement. And we're not talking about a, a full reskin, it may be changing, it could be as simple as changing the order in which the products are displayed on the storefront. It okay. might be changing the color of a button. It might be introducing a new category so that things can be found a little bit easier. But it's a very much often, a very often overlooked phase of the, mm. the build process mm. is getting the feedback, and acting upon it. Okay, uh, would I be right in thinking that that review refine process is one of Douglas's four pillars that he mentioned during COVID? It sure is. I think we probably need a separate uh, video for that <laughs> yeah. because that's that's some some uh, piece of content. But I think um, hearing what you're saying now is that success is, is all that matters, and it doesn't matter how long it takes it, but as long as you achieve it and doing it the right way. Yeah. And okay, that's good. So. Um, I asked you what you do in your day job. You said your customer success um, lead at Infigo. You also travel a lot as part of that role. Um, we've recently been away yep. to uh, the United States. I've got a couple of questions on that. Um, but first of all, tell me a little bit about um, what you did over there in terms of the customers, first of all. Well, obviously, we mentioned earlier about my hashtag successful web to print. We've also got hashtag Greg on tour, um, <laughs> which I know a few people give me some stick about. But no. Um, we try and maximise the opportunity when we're we're overseas at events. Well, not even overseas. When we're at any event, let's maximise the opportunity. Yeah. Um, let's utilise the time to meet with existing customers. That, that that's face my primary um, objective. Um, and and meeting them face to face and learning what's working. Maybe not what's not working. And actually, seeing the print shop, you actually go in and see the. It's the funniest thing when I walk in. Obviously, we've got hundreds of customers around the world, and I've seen one or two uh, print setups before, and. It's, to, it's still to this day amazes me every time I go in because everyone lays their factory out or shop out different to the, the previous one and they'll be very much different to the next one as well. Um, so I like to go in and see it, get, get a real feel for the business because when the, the main contact method at the moment is a, a video call or a telephone call or email, you don't get the full feel of the, the organization. So for me to be privileged enough to go in and visit a lot of the customers yep. face to face, it really does help set the scene a lot more for me. Um, it might be that I can see that they've got a bit of finishing equipment mm. that could actually lend itself to a really good product that maybe another customer is excelling with and we can share success stories right, and we can right. say, did you know? Yeah. Did you know Infigo can do this? Because yeah. a lot of the time, actually, they, they don't know. Yeah. I was on a call with a customer yesterday, one of our newer customers that's just still getting uh, onboarded, and they said, what we've learned with Infigo is, it feels limitless. Um, Some statement. I know, and, <laughs> and you kind of think, <clears throat> yeah, it, to, to an extent it is, because they, they bought the product in um, in one with one kind of thought process or mindset in, in the markets they were going to attack. Um, they're going to be integrating their Infigo storefront with their ex an existing print IQ user, so they're going to be hooking up in Figo to Print IQ to start getting the benefits okay. of, uh, and the efficiency gains of that integration. Just on that, we've got a big announcement for Print IQ coming up in the new year. So Fantastic. I'll get that one in there. Um, and, and now they've they've spoken with another Infigo customer yep. that's also a, a Print IQ user. Okay. And they've been sharing war stories and um, they're also going to be hooking up to their focus switch workflow. Nice. And it really goes back to what we talked about earlier of these efficiency gains and actually the value in that. Every yeah. time someone's manually touching touching any job yeah, yeah. You're, you're saying buy to any profitability yeah um so we're making sure that we're putting the right information in front of people but also going back to me visiting i can actually pick up on these things so quite often i'll take a bit of a step back and just maybe watch an order getting process yeah, yeah and then give them some some advice so did you know because a lot of the time people aren't always aware and that's another fundamental part of, of the customer success team's job is making mm. sure that we're providing the right content and education to our customers and that's why we launched Infigo Academy so that we're continually educating it's not just when you come on board yeah it's a lifestyle through, it's, it's through the, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the entire tenure of your, your time as a user I'll come on to Academy in a minute I just want to go back to you wandering around the factory floor <laughs> in North America I, I something that um, I noticed coming into Infigo back in uh, 
2016 was, and obviously being in the marketing background, I look at things very differently. But I watched like Douglas, for example, who, who's, who's very similar, um, if not intense on the factory floor, where he will look at everything and he will start to, to take apart, rebuild, improve the, the workflow on the factory floor. I would love to know how much information we have as a business on the good, the bad, the ugly of, of those setups. And it's, it's interesting because I often feel now as a business, we spend a lot of time consulting on um, adding value further up the workflow yeah. um, rather than w just going and putting in web to print. Yeah. So it's really good that, that you do that. Uh, what were the highlights? Um, and obviously you might not be able to say too much because some <laughs> of the customers might not want you to, to share them. But what were the highlights when you were we're over there seeing those customers. So we did, uh, oh, I did three cities on my road to vision trip. So we were in Atlanta for Printing United, which yep. was a fantastic event for Infigo. Um, even got a very rogue uh, visit from, from Father Christmas. He did stand. pop by, didn't he? I, did was, by. I, I made sure that there was a balanced <laughs> team and Scrooge was very much in play. Although I, I was proudly wearing my Christmas socks from one of our partners that don't understand when I went to visit some customers. <laughs> I think that's because I'd run out of clean socks by the end of my two week trip. And, and who, who was the partner? So that was Ikeo with yeah, their, their yeah. famous uh, branded socks that they like to, to yeah. give out. So um, initially at Atlanta was fantastic. I met with 20 customers at the exhibition. Wow. Wow. Um, and that's why these, these events are so important for us because yes, with the primary objective in Figo being at these events is kind of, it's from a, this is my whole part here, it's from a sales perspective and a brand awareness perspective. Um, but for me, my primary objective is to meet with customers. Sure. So to, to meet with 20 on the show floor in a two and a half day event is, is amazing. Brilliant, yeah. Off the back of that, I then traveled to Minneapolis, um, went and met one of our, our customers, the Packaging Lab, so yeah. shout out to Dan and Jeff and the yeah. team there. Um, who and are smashing it, by the way. Who are absolutely crushing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, year on year growth with their B2C storefront, uh, packaginglab.com. And it's amazing to see, these guys were a startup, and it's amazing to see and Figo have been as part of this journey from, from day one. Mm. And the fact that they've got everything so fine-tuned, that they've got a 24-hour turnaround that they prefer, the only people in the world that will offer this for, for flexible mm. packaging. Mm. Um, and I was lucky enough um, to see that that in operation. But from the Infigo standpoint, the thing that amazed me, so I sat on a, um, a bench in the middle of the office, and there was offices all around me, almost like a horseshoe shape. Yes. Yeah. And I hope the guys don't mind me saying this, but every single person in every single office that was around me, on one of their monitors, they had Infigo open. And it was a really proud moment for me mm. because I'm sat there and I've got um, the leaders of the business, the guys that have, have founded this, they've both got it open on their screens. So yeah. they've got their workflow guy with it open. Yeah. Their Infigo product champion, the accounts team. Yeah production team yeah. every single one of these people have got in Figo yeah. and it's when you see that you understand and appreciate quite how important our product can be to a lot of organisations mm -hmm. so that was a really nice um, part of the trip to go and see that and it's no mean feat is it starting up a B2C site or B2B2C no. site off off the ground yeah. and, and then where it is now it's, it's, yeah, it's the, amazing their, their growth story has been fantastic and we're really proud to be a part of that and and we, we really treasure the relationship we've got with those guys and they're they're definitely on the on a journey to do some incredibly good things for the industry as well. Yeah, um, that's good to know. So yeah, that was that was a nice part. Then travelled to uh, one of our B two B customers to go and talk with how they're in a very different part of the industry. Actually, um, not not really a print company first and foremost, um, but they have print products as part of their offering. So yep. it was quite interesting to see to see that in action. Then off the back of that, I travelled to Boston, mm -hmm. um, went and saw. A customer that's fairly early on in their Infigo journey, but they're going to be using Infigo to deliver static greetings cards. Okay. Um, but again, it's B two B, so this is for it's almost like a trade supplier setup in a way. So people are going to log in and order okay. high volumes of these greetings cards for to fulfil their shop stock, etc. Uh, and then the final trip was to see Italian Action Group also in Boston. Um, Italian have been with Infigo since twenty. 19, 2020, I okay. believe. Yeah. Um, integrated with Tharston. Yeah. Um, and they're they've again got a really efficient workflow, and they and they're very very proud. Mark's done an incredible job there, and he's mm -hmm. very proud to show me it. And he said, "Look, I can, I can get a file to the Indigo without touching it." And okay. that is for us. That's the pinnacle. That's the panacea. That's what, we, that's what we're always <laughs> looking for. So it was a really nice mixture of visiting four different shops yeah. in four very different. Three of them being B two B, one of them being B two C. Yeah. 
but all in different parts of the or different verticals within the industry. So it was really nice uh, end to the trip. So we touched on, or well, you touched on Santa, obviously at Printing United. Yeah. We were given the gift of time. Um, before we kicked off with the, with the, with the trade show, you were wearing a very much a different hat. You were at HP, I believe, for their event. Yes, so, um, so HP hosted an event the day before Printing United, um, which Paul and I were there to represent in Vigo. Um, it was hosted within their graphics experience center within uh, in, in Atlanta. Um, very, very well attended. 420 odd. I believe, yeah. yeah. Which, when we were told there was gonna be 70 people attending and then there was over 400, it just shows the the, the power and the reach that that, that brand um, really pulls and delivers, and it was a, a really really nice event. There was a really nice atmosphere at the at the location, um, and again for us a bit more of a brand awareness event, but showcasing that our partnership with with HP, we were lucky enough to be next to Bob Rouse's glass box. I was going to ask you. So this is quite famous. This this screen or box yeah. has all the partners. Yeah, tell so me a bit about it's that. Kind of like a. To an outsider, describe it as a command center. Right, um, Bob's command center. Yeah. Um, so shout out to Bob and his team there because it's it's fantastic. It, it looks the part, but it also delivers mm -hmm. as a bunch. So we were showcasing the integration with um, with Cyclo, um, and actually something we're very proud of at Infigo is is that partnership with HP. So anyone that attends the experience center has got the opportunity of creating a personalized product as they walk around and they, they might be looking at the latest Indigo or sure. might be looking at one of the finishing partners that are on the floor. So everyone's upon arrival is greeted with a, yeah. a, a tablet device. They'll, yeah. they'll personalize a postcard. Uh, there's a couple other products on there. There's a label product and, and, and a carton as well. Um, personalize that as they walk around and then by the time they finish their tour of the factory, yeah. they've got their personalized piece in their hand. So Infigo's powering that. So place it on, a, on an Infigo storefront, we pass sure. it into Cyclo and Print OS down to the Indigo, off to the finishing partner, and then in the post. Easy as that, easy as that. Yeah. When you've got the technology, it's easy. Um, and I'm, the mindset. And the mindset, and the culture, yeah, the culture. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna go too much into, uh, so, so we were on the trade show floor, you and I spoke about this, there was a good few hundred people came to visit us. It was fantastic to have the conversations we had. You were a very, very busy guy. I had personally many conversations about what we call second generation web to print. Um, I think, for another time, we can probably say we'll have a video on Paul the Plumber and right. Second Gen Web to Print and what's going on in North America, which is really exciting. Um, but I want, wanted to touch on SAM and the Academy. Yeah. Um, I feel that that's something that's real value add externally yeah. as well as internally. Uh, he's been a busy boy this year. Um, yeah. Any highlights for you that you want to share? On, on yeah, so, so look, I hired SAM 16 months ago now. Yeah. And SAM was originally recruited to take over the training side of things, which is a, a a deliverable that Duncan used to share or split with his time as a support analyst with as part of Hannah's support team. Yeah. And so we hired Sam because in, in line with our continued growth, we needed to make sure that we had the a team or a, a dedicated personnel that could to deliver that side of things. So Sam was recruited as that and very quickly reinvigorated our entire training offering. Okay. So we identified that actually a classroom style approach does not lend itself to our industry. And the, or in a post-COVID world, maybe. Or in a post-COVID world <laughs> as well. Um, the the nature of the people that we typically train, whether it's a pre-press team, whether it's in the studio, whether it's a dedicated team that's been put in place, they've got other parts of their day job, which sure. quite often you can't stop. If there's a file that needs to hit the press, there's a file that needs to hit the press, and right? So it's not conducive to have these people sat in, in a room with a trainer for yeah. three, four, five, six hours. So we thought actually, and say we, I, I didn't, Sam did, he's yeah. the brains behind this. Yeah. Um, said, look, I'm a complete outsider to this. Let's deliver the same content, but in bite-sized video chunks. Okay. So Sam devised the academy and off he went on his Which I journey. guess the user, if they're looking to fix something, uh, set something up out of hours at home, be in a video, they can pause it rewind it come back to it completely on demand content yeah, yeah like that the as we as we sit here today there's over 200 videos on our wow. um, academy youtube channel which is available for anyone to go and access yeah. um prime eyes can go and have a look to see uh, <laughs> how fantastic our product is but but for um for customers that we're bringing on board or even for our existing like seasoned customers that want to learn more about a specific area yeah as well as having the written content and articles, of which we know we don't cover every aspect of the platform via that, 
as well as having the written side of things, we're now bringing in the video okay. articles. And Sam's then taken it one step further. So rather than just simply giving you a link to YouTube and saying, off you go. So we've now got a learning management platform. So every new customer that we onboard is set up on the on the LMS. Okay. And they are learning pathways devised that they that the, the, the learner has to go through, yep. tick off that they've to become a product champion. To become a product <laughs> champion. So the, the difficulty of that is, again, as we know, Figo is a very big product um, because it lends itself to so many limitless. <laughs> to, <quite> limitless <laughs> to, to, yeah, to, to quote a customer. Um, yeah, the um, the pathways are there so that we can keep a customer on the right direction in, okay. in the early days because, as I mentioned, there's over 200 videos now on the on the academy. And just think, yeah. if I'm a new user and I've got 200 videos ranging between some of two minutes, yeah, some sure. are 25 minutes. So there's yeah. a there's a big range. A yeah. So Sam's trying to keep people on a bit more of a direct path. We've then taken that a step further, and I tasked Sam and said, look, I want to have a user have a very concise pathway. Yeah. So Sam's gone away and developed something called the, the quick build guide. Nice. So we've now got, our, no, sorry, the rapid build guide. Okay. Um, even quicker. <laughs> which is, yeah, it's even quicker. So two hours worth of content in total okay. split across eight videos. And okay. these are the areas that we believe you need to understand to launch a storefront. And watch this space, but um, this, this past week, I've just tasked Sam with taking that to the next level. Okay. We know that you can, we proved this at our user event automate print last year in, um, in Las Vegas. Yeah. Um, we know you can build a storefront in now in minutes. And that was a lot of the technological changes that we made in a post COVID world. It's something yeah, that we yeah. reacted upon and realized that when opportunity arises, you need to jump on it. Yeah. Like so a WordPress feel, wasn't it? Yeah. Like, so we, we wanted a way that you could quickly and easily deploy a branded storefront yeah. that looks polished mm -hmm. um, without it taking days and days and weeks. Mm -hmm. So, I tasked Sam with a 20 minute start to finish. I'm a new user, I want to watch 20 minutes of content and at the end of that, I want to have a storefront that's branded, I want to have a basic product, just a static item, no no personalization templates or anything, yeah. but a static item, a user set up, an order placed, and then log in as an administrator, know where to find my file within 20 minutes. So okay. these five steps. Okay. It's not integrated to your MIS, it's not integrated to your workflow, it's a standalone storefront, but within 20 minutes you can understand the power of what you can achieve in that time. And if our users can realise that what they can achieve in 20 minutes and then think, actually, what can I achieve in, in an hour? In an hour. And then we say, what can I achieve in a week? And yeah. what can I achieve in a month? Yeah. So we're, we're planning to get Sam on, actually, um, in the new year, maybe even before, to talk about the academy. Maybe you and I could have a chat with him about that and maybe do a, do a demonstration with him and see Absolutely. how it works. But I think, um, I think it's been fantastic. I'm going to leave the academy bit there because I think, again, it deserves yeah, its, its own, own, yeah, its own thing. Um, good luck with the packages, um, good luck with uh, successful web to print and thank you so much for your time today. Cheers Chris.